What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So for today's video, I'm going to show you how to waterproof your shower using the HydroBlock shower system. So you can take your shower from this to this, fully waterproofed and ready to flood test in just a few hours. What's up everybody and welcome back. Today's video, we're gonna be waterproofing a shower using the HydroBlock shower system. So the first thing I want you to do is to take care of your drain area. The easiest way to do this is to have your plumber come in and get your drain set. Now, the HydroBlock shower system on their pan box, they have a template for you. You can use this for your drain location for your specific pan. Um, just a couple of things to keep in mind is that the pan can be cut. So if you buy a pan that's close to the size that you need, you might have to cut it. So that would need to be adjusted. You'd have to cut your template how you cut your pan, essentially. Um, another quick thing to mention is when you get your template, you can see here that this outer ring is going to be the ring that is on your shower pan. And your drain location has to be center this. So this dotted line is going to be the hole that needs to be in your subfloor. So the outer line is where the pan ends. The inner line here is going to be how big the hole needs to be, which uh, according to HydroBlock, it has to be about five to six inches in diameter. So just make sure you're paying attention to that. And then there's also a foam ring that comes in the shower pan. So if you need to find the center line for your plumber or if you're doing it yourself, you put this in the center. So you use your template, you can cut this out, put this in the center and this gives you the center for where your pipes gotta go. It will help you a little bit better with your measurements finding the center. Another thing to keep in mind is that today we're going to be installing the low profile HydroBlock shower pan. The low profile hydro HydroBlock shower pan can also be installed with a curbless entry. So just be careful with your measurements. If you're doing a curbless or a curbed, I am installing with a curbed shower. So you wanna make sure that you're pulling your measurements for the center, either including the curb or not including the curb, depending on what kind of shower you're building. Additionally, if you are installing the low profile shower pan with a curbless entry shower, you do, HydroBlock does require that you waterproof outside the shower as well. So typically when your plumber comes in and sets your drain pipe, you're going to have a little bit of extra sticking out of the floor. Uh, per HydroBlock, we cut it to match the subfloor. So that is what the HydroBlock instructions say. So if your plumber leaves it sticking out, you can go ahead and use either an inside pipe cutter to cut that down or use a multi-tool to cut it flush with your subfloor. So the next thing you wanna do once your drain situation is all worked out, now we have to pay attention to the subfloor. Is the subfloor flat? Is it ready to accept the shower pan? Now you can do two things. If you are flattening the entire floor, that's fine. But today I'm just going to work inside the area of the shower pan. So I'm gonna take my shower pan, dry fit it in place, and then I'm gonna trace the outside and I'll check the floor inside that area. We're gonna check the floor for flatness. Using a level, make sure the level is big enough to cover the area of your shower pan. You don't wanna to use too small a level and not be able to get an accurate reading. So my floor is pretty flat. Um, the rule here is 1 16th over 24 inches. So basically if your shower pan was low or high in any one area, which is usually the case, you're going to have to pour self leveler. So if you wanna learn how to prep and pour self leveler for a shower pan over a wooden subfloor, I will link the video below. And also I have videos for concrete subfloors as well, if that is the subfloor you are working on. But for now, we're not going to be pouring any self leveler because my subfloor is flat and it's ready to accept the shower pan. Okay, so now I'm going to dry fit the shower pan and the drain. So I'm just gonna lay down the pan back in the spot and I'm gonna dry fit the drain without the rubber gasket. All right, so this is how the drain comes and the rubber gasket I'm talking about is this green one in here. So when we're dry fitting it, you just wanna remove this ball seal out of the drain before you dry fit it. I'm just gonna stick this on here and just make sure everything sits properly um, this area here, like you have play around here, which is fine. So this is, this is okay. And also the shower pan kit comes with this tool, which you just put it inside the drain pipe here and you can like move it around to fit, 
to be more center if you need it. So that is really for more when you're actually setting the drain and once you set it down, you wanna make sure you get it into place and use this tool to get it perfect. So for some information, what we're using is a modified thin set and you wanna put this stuff down with no smaller than a 3 8 by 3 8 notch trowel. We're using a half inch, so that's a little bit bigger. That's all we have, so that's what we're gonna use. And now let me turn this around. I wanna go into detail about how he's putting down the thin set. Okay, so what he's doing right now, you can see he's using the flat side of the trowel, which is called burning in the thin set, or some people call it back buttering. I call it burning in the thin set. And then he's gonna go in and he's just gonna spread out all of the thin set and he's going to use directional troweling and trowel all of his notches in the same direction. Now another important tip here is when you are troweling, you wanna make sure that you are going in the shortest distance. Okay, so once your thin set's down, you're gonna place your shower pan on the thin set. So before you press it down into your thin set and get a really good bond, just check around the walled perimeter, make sure that the pan is in the right space and it is exactly where you want it before you start stepping on it. So I'm gonna start stepping on the shower pan to collapse the ridges and get all of the air out, knock down those notches, starting from the center and working my way out. So once your pan is set, now it's time to set the drain. Make sure you get all your drain pieces, the drain, the collar, the pipe tool, and you're also going to need your sealant and your caulking gun. The first thing you wanna do is add two beads of sealant around this pipe collar. Um, it is required to have at least 3 eighths of an inch bead of caulking. So we're gonna do one on the inside and one on the outside. So now before you set your drain down, remember we took out the seal, so we have to put that back in. But one thing to note when you're putting it back in is that on the inside, there's going to be a down arrow, so you wanna make sure that that down arrow is pointing down towards the drain. So that's gonna go into the drain this way with the arrow pointing down. So now you wanna take your pipe puller tool and insert it into the pipe, and you want to make sure you straighten out your pipe puller. Once your collar is in the right position, you just drop this down, and as you're dropping down the drain, you also want to you want to make sure that you're pulling up on your pipe tool so that you're not pressing the pipe down. So the next step is to screw in the drain at this location here. Um, since we are on a plywood subfloor, I can do that. If you are on a concrete subfloor, um, then obviously you're not going to be screwing this down, but you do have to make sure that you apply enough sealant in these screw holes to fill them up and not leave these open. And I'm also going to just add a little bit more sealant around the perimeter of the drain before I go ahead and flatten it out. Now I'm gonna use a flat spatula that comes with the kit and I'm gonna flatten out this whole area. So now the hardest part is done, which is installing the shower pan and your drain connection. And the next thing that you have to do is start dry fitting your wall boards. So you definitely want to dry fit everything, take your measurements and make your cuts before you start installing. It just makes the installation process that much smoother because you have to use sealant and I'll get to that. So since my shower pan is five by three and that's what the board is, five by three, I'm gonna stick this in here for now. This is gonna be my first board. So I'm gonna run two full boards and then a cut at the top. And then this side, I'm gonna have to pull a measurement from the inside to there to get a cut. So I like to take my measurements with the board in place and that's because you have to take account for this half inch board that would be here. You can do it manually, but you never know how, if this stud that it's laying on is out and your, your top measurement might be different than your bottom measurement. So it's nice to just pull the measurement really quick and double check this way you don't have to go back and fix your cut. So the next cut I have to make is for this shower valve. So you want to measure to about the center. So it's about 44 and a half and I'm going to subtract an eighth because the board is going to sit in that track right there and I can't fit my tape measure in there, but it's about an eighth. So 44 and a half minus an eighth, which is 44 and three eighths for me. So then from the inside, it's looking like 16 and a half and I'm going to subtract a half inch and make it 16. I'm 
just going to put this other board up and I'm going to get the measurements for the final two pieces. We have one more piece here, one more piece here, cut everything, pull everything down, and we're gonna start sealing everything up. So now everything is all dry fit in place. The next thing I'm gonna do is pull all the boards down and then we're going to start sealing the seams around the shower pan area. We can screw in all of our boards in the field and continue on waterproofing. So first things first, before I start securing the board, I'm going to go around and I'm going to add some sealant in this channel on the back side of the wall in the side wall here. Um, this is the hydro block sealant that goes with the entire system. So as I always say, just make sure you are using the appropriate products with whatever product manufacturer you are using. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you get your board inside the channel and you are embedding it into your sealant so that you get a good seal. It's okay if some of it's oozing out, we're gonna actually go back and add some more after we secure the board. All right, so one important thing to note is that you wanna measure 12 inches up from your shower pan. That's where the first set of screws are gonna go. So now once you got your first board up and you have this inside corner here, we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. We're gonna fill up this channel with a half inch bead of the sealant. And then I'm also gonna run a half inch bead of sealant along this board where the two boards are going to meet. So because these boards meet up over here, I wanna make sure that I add this second board up first before I place this third board because it's actually spanning over two boards. So again, Anytime you have two boards meeting one another, you wanna add sealant on the inside before you place the board on top. This is going to give you a good waterproof seal in between your boards. So you just put the board up, place it. Another thing to remember is that when you have two boards joining up here, we're, we're spanning the screws 12 inches apart. Another 12 inches would be somewhere around here. HydroBlock recommends that you share the stud with one screw and washer instead of adding instead of adding a screw and a screw. So we want it to look like that. So one quick thing I'm going to do as I'm still working, I don't want to leave these goops of sealant here. So I'm just going to take my, my corner tool and I'm going to just tool it flat so that when I come back and I have to treat these corners, it's not all chunky. Same thing over here. I'm going to be coming back and adding sealant, but in the meantime, I just want it to lay nice and flat. So I'm gonna place this board in the channel and I'm going to slide it in to place. Now again, I'm just gonna go over my inside corners with the corner tool and just smooth out any sealant just for now. So at this point, you can kind of see how the flow is gonna go. I'm going to secure, finish securing this board, starting 12 inches up and then 12 inches in the field. And then I'm going to add my last two boards, putting the sealant in the seam, putting the sealant on the inside corner, wiping away any excess that squeezes out. And then once we're done securing all the boards and waterproofing the inside seams, we're gonna come back and I wanna to talk to you and show you, walk you through how to finish tying in the waterproofing for your pan and finish waterproofing your screw holes and these seams here. So the next thing we're gonna do, now that all the boards are hung, I'm going to start waterproofing all of the screw holes and the seams. All of these screw holes have to get some sealant and so you wanna make sure that you're adding enough so that it looks like this. Let me show you. So your screw holes 
should look like this. You want to make sure that they're covered evenly. There's no penetration showing in the board. Additionally, you want to add more sealant on the outside of your seam here, and HydroBlock requires it to be at least one inch on each board, so it's, a, so it's gonna be a two inch total overlap from the seam. So I'm gonna work my way from the top down, and then I'll show you what to do with the shower pan. All right, so I'm going to apply a liberal bead of the sealant on the outside of the inside seam, the vertical seam, and then also, same thing on the horizontal seam going this way, because when I flatten it out, I wanna make sure that I'm getting that two inch overlap. So now just to show you what I mean, we're gonna flatten this out using the flat spatula provided in the kit. And you get a nice two inch overlap right over the seam. And it's all closed off. There's no gaps or anything that you can see. So you know it's 100% waterproof. So the great thing about HydroBlock is that they provide you with a ton of stuff. They provide you with the flat spatula, the inside corner spatula, a test plug to flood test your shower pan. They provide you with a ton of things this way that it's a complete system and you don't have to like get your own tools. I mean, so that's really convenient. And then when I have left over, I just start adding it to the other screw holes. Just makes it easy. So now with your corner spatula, I'm just gonna do the same thing and press down and smooth everything out. You might have to go over it a couple of times, add more sealant, that's fine. So now that the wall board is all waterproof, we have to waterproof our wall to pan connection, which is these two inside seams here where the boards sit into the pan. So before I add more sealant, HydroBlock requires that you have your mesh tape embedded in your sealant where the, bo where the board is gonna meet the pan. It's gonna start three inches from the inside corner and then run all the way over and then it's going to stop about three inches from the end of the shower over there. Same thing on this wall. So first, before I have my sealant here, which gets all sticky and messy, I'm going to get my mesh tape, unravel it, and I'm gonna cut the appropriate size so I have that ready. So once I lay down my sealant, I can put the mesh tape. So now I'm going to apply a liberal bead of sealant. I want it to be covered. You know, this is a very important seam in the shower, so I'm not going to skimp on the sealant here. So now I'm gonna take my corner tool and I'm going to flatten it all out. So now I'm gonna take my mesh tape. One side is sticky, so just make sure you put that side to the sealant. After you add your mesh tape into your sealant, you're gonna add another bead over that and then we're gonna smooth it out with the corner tool. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing on this side and then we're gonna to move to the curb. Okay, so I have a outside corner shower that's going to require two cur a curb on two sides essentially. So it takes, this is going to take a little bit more planning. So I'm going to use one full curb for the long side of my pan. So what I'm gonna to have to do is I'm gonna to have to cut this curb right before the channel so that the other curb can come and sit flush and they can meet over here. I'll show you what I mean, but if you have a shower where you have three walls and you have just your curb, HydroBlock recommends that you cut the curb, you give an eighth inch room on either side of the curb. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut this curb. I'm going to cut it right to right here where the channel ends because I'm gonna cut the other curb that comes this way and it's going to end over here. And I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so we got our nice clean cut. It's flush with the channel. Now I can take my other curb and you'll see what I mean. I'm going to slide this in the channel. I'm just going to mark it to the outside of the other curb. And then that's where we're gonna cut it. You can cut these curbs on a chop saw, circular saw, or hacksaw. Um, we just use the chop saw, it gets a really clean cut. 
Now that both pieces are cut, this is how they're going to fit together. We're going to mix up some thin set so that we can adhere it to the subfloor, and then we're going to move on with the installation. So the first thing you have to do is add the thin set to your substrate. So using the same method we did with the shower pan before you put the shower pan down, I burned in some thin set to the substrate. Now I'm going to add some more thin set here. And then you can go ahead and add your notches. Now first I'm going to try to spread it out a little bit though, because there's a lot here. Also, HydroBlock recommends keeping your thin set at least a half inch away from the foam pan. I'm just going to go in there afterwards and clean it up with my finger, so you'll see what I do. So here's what I'm going to do next. I'm just going to use my finger and I'm going to clean up a little channel right here. This is just going to help with um, the thin set from oozing where it's not supposed to go. Now we're going to burn in the thin set to the bottom of our curb. All right, so you have your thin set on the substrate. You have your, your curb burned in with thin set. Now I'm going to take the sealant and I'm going to fill up this channel with a half inch bead of sealant. So now we're gonna finally install the curb. I just want to make sure that I am adhering it well into the sealant and the channel. And then also, I'm just going to give it a light push back and forth to collapse those ridges. And you can see all of the air has escaped. We're getting good contact to the substrate. So I'm going to do the same exact process on the other side and I will show you how we're gonna connect the two curbs. Essentially, all I'm gonna do is add sealant here so that they can glue together, and then I'm going to add sealant on the outside, similar to what we've done on the walls already. But when I get there, I'll show you. So now I'm gonna go ahead with the same exact process that we did for the shower wall to pan connection over here for the curbs. So we're gonna treat them exactly like they were walls, I'm going to add a bead of sealant, flatten that out, throw the mesh tape up, add some more sealant, and we're going to flatten it out with the corner tool. You also might have to go back and add some more sealant. Definitely don't want to see the green mesh tape. I'm just going to keep going over it until it's completely covered and making sure that I'm getting it covered all the way through. The last and final thing I want to do is add a piece of mesh tape right here where the two curves meet, and then after that, we'll be complete. So I'll do the other side of the curb and then I'll come back, add this mesh tape and we'll be good to go. So now that all of the waterproofing is done, the system has been installed, the next step is to flood test and you should always be flood testing. But the great thing about this system is that it is a sealant based system. So that means that you can flood test immediately. So as soon as you're done installing, as soon as you put the last bead of sealant down, you can flood test because their sealant cures underwater. Um, so we're going to do that next, and we'll show you how that goes. All right, so now once you are all done building your waterproof shower, it's time to test. So with HydroBlock, they provide you with a test ball and a screw hook. So the first thing we're going to do is put the screw hook into the ball. That's going to make it easy for us to insert it into the hole, get it wedged in there, fill up our pan, and also pull it out when we're ready to let the water drain. I'm going to screw this in here first. So I'm going to make sure that I insert this ball low enough so that it's past there. Okay, so once you fill your pan, you want to let the water settle. You're going to want to make a mark either on your wall or by using a square. Um, you're going to have to fill it depending on what your local code states and however long they want you to keep the flood test going. Usually it's about 24 hours. Um, and before you walk away for the day, you want to make sure you're checking for any obvious signs of leaking. Uh, if you do have a leak or a problem, it might happen slow over time, but just make sure that you look around and make sure you're not seeing that you're losing water around the shower pan or anywhere in the room outside of the shower pan. So I'm just going to leave this and we'll come back when the flood test is done. 
So once your flood test is complete and you wait the appropriate amount of time, usually it's about 24 hours, you can just pull out your test plug and let the water go down the drain. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I am in my studio and I have to actually vacuum the water out because I don't have plumbing set up. So once you pull out your test plug and you let your shower pan dry out, you are all good to go. And the only next thing that you should be doing before tiling is protecting the shower pan to make sure that you don't mess it up during the tiling process. I typically put down either a scrap piece of foam board or I will cut out the cardboard box that the pan came in and I will lay it down over there and that's usually more than enough protection while I'm tiling. So overall, my impressions on this, because this was my first time installing it ever, uh, it is a super simple system. It's very straightforward. We got through installing the pan and the drain like super quick, which is very nice. A couple of things that I love is that it's a very rigid system, like the product is super nice. It cuts so nice. Even the foam on the inside is super strong, which is really nice because sometimes you could be walking all over the pan, even just installing the board and stuff like that. And sometimes it gets dense and it can get pretty crappy. This is not like that. So I love that it is low profile and it's as close to curbless as you possibly can get. So say for example, if you live somewhere where you can't have a curbless shower or it's just so much work, this is the second best option and it's still super minimalist, which is awesome. A couple of other things about the system is, as you noticed, if you watch the video, the drain installation is very different from any other bonding flange drain that is on the market. Um, so it is a ball seal instead of a chemical seal with the drain pipe. So it's a little bit different. It's just a little bit of a different method, but it was really straightforward as far as installing it and attaching it to the pan. I mean, you can't really get any more straightforward than that. Um, I love that it's a sealant-based system. I love sealant-based systems. Install and go. You don't have to be pulling out the inset, doing arts and crafts with the banding the seams makes your life so easy. Another thing um, that they do a little bit different is they add mesh tape around the shower pan perimeter, which working with the sealant is a little bit difficult. Um, at first, like I hated doing it because it gets everywhere. It's like as soon as you touch peanut butter, suddenly it's all over and that's exactly how it is working with the sealant. So having to add the mesh tape into the sealant is a little bit of a pain, but I know why they do it. It adds rigidity in case there's any movement. It adds more um, strength to that seam, which of course is the most important seam in your shower by your shower pan. Um, but once I got the hang of it using the straight tool instead of sticking it in with my sticking the mesh tape in with my finger. It was really a breeze. You just put it in, add more sealant, and you go. Um, a lot of these things, when you're trying something new, is just learning a technique to use it. And then after that, it's just rinse and repeat and go. So overall, very straightforward, very easy to use. Definitely an awesome system. We flood tested it with no drain connection here, and we weren't even worried about it leaking into our studio. So um, very good awesome system. If you guys have any questions, don't forget to drop a comment. I'm going to be doing some more videos, installing the niche and probably tiling and all of that so we can get into how their great works meeting up to tile in the shower pan. So we'll go over that as well. And if you have any other questions based on prep for showers, tiles, etc., check out my other videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching.